Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Dheeraj. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm the founder of New Sigma. Uh, and, uh, you know, Raja, I'm assuming that uh, the, the participants of these are mostly business school students uh, from the IAMs and, and maybe a few other schools. Yeah, Dheeraj, that's right. Right. So, uh, so, uh, so the, 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 the topic that was given to me was quite interesting. I think that uh, uh, which is reflective of what many people feel probably, and are, uh, some of them are op open to expressing it. Some of us are not so open, and I'm hoping some of us don't feel this way also. So that's uh, that'll be nice. Uh, but uh, this perspective of feeling anxious in current situation is quite normal. Um, and uh, um, and I want to maybe uh, you know. Um, I actually typically don't like to give a give a talk where uh, you know it's only one sided uh, because it's it's not as much fun for me. So I'll do this for a little time, um, but most of the time after that, I want to see if I can get some of the panelists, some of the people, some of you guys into this panel, and keep it interactive. Um, and we could even exchange the people in the panel uh, depending on if some other people, some of some some other people want to come uh, on board. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there is, uh, as, as we are going through what we are going through, I want to reflect upon a few concepts. Why those concepts are important? Because I'm going to build my argument based on those concepts. The first concept, you know, uh, I want to, uh, you know, understand what is time is time just a duration um, or is time all the events in that duration uh, so if you were to look at time as a duration um, one hour is one hour one hour is 60 minutes and 60 minutes is 60 seconds each in those 60 minutes. And that's the duration. But if you were to look at the number of events in that one hour, that changes quite a bit. And it becomes directly proportional to our ability as a society to produce, transmit and consume events. And you will appreciate the fact that with technology, with progress, or I don't know if we should necessarily call this all progress, but let's assume for a second that it is progress. And with, with all of this technology, we've been able to remove friction and through which we've been able to fit more events in a certain duration, which, which means, which, which brings me to the point that our definition of time should be very different when we look at, if we look at it as all the events in a certain duration. Um, with that premise, I'll build my second part of my argument, which is the fact that we are experiencing time more and faster. We have moved from a world where time was in the backdrop to a world where time has become in the front drop in the front landscape. Um, uh, and if you get to know me a little bit, you'll know that I take a lot of my inspiration from physics. In other words, we have moved from space to space time. Um, and why do I say that? Well, the world before uh, the information age was the industrial age. The world before the industrial age uh, was uh, was an agricultural age, uh, and uh, and before that we were uh, hunting, gathering, foraging, and all of those kind of things. Um, and uh, and I'm as I paint our history with a broad brush, I want us to appreciate the fact that uh, you know this land, the, this canvas determines the politics of the situation, it de determines the religions of the situation, it determines uh, the economics, 
all of those things it was determined in this canvas and why i say what i say is that when we look at time as number of events in a particular duration and we start appreciating this a little bit more what we will see is what has happened to us is that we moved from a very physical world which pretty much existed in space to a world whose physicality has been challenged as we move to space time uh think everything is become less and less and less physical what we valued in the past used to be land and gold uh and grains what we value today is things that are less physical like stocks uh options uh you know all of these things where the physicality is may not be in just space but in space time so therefore we have moved from a world of bigger is better to a world which is faster is better we moved from a world where economies of scale used to be the metric and if you if you are all in business school you would know about economies of scale but we have moved without without our knowledge or maybe maybe with our knowledge but not very uh, not very uh, you know uh, 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 you know in the background we moved to economies of speed and i don't think economies of speed is taught in business schools at least it was not taught when i went to school at university of chicago so with with that perspective i want to state that understanding the canvas on which we sit is very very important we are now sitting on a canvas of time we are sitting on a canvas from space to space time we are sitting on a canvas which used to be economies of scale to economies of speed we are sitting in a canvas which used to be bigger is better to faster is better so everything we view, view in this world has to be with that perspective you cannot talk about change without talking about time change is nothing but everything at a derivative of time uh change in velocity is acceleration change in distance is velocity so on and so forth you know uh the with that perspective what i want to give you is that now that we've started talking about change as the third part so i built uh, you know first i talked about the concept of time then i construct the concept of of economies of speed and now i'm talking about the concept of uh change which is very very important and very and you will see 2020 is year of change in a big way which means that 2020 was a certain duration in which more events were put into that duration that's the rate at which we uh, we stuffed events into this duration was unbelievable we had uh, obviously we had the pandemic which uh, but it was not just that we are going to go into an election the, in the united states which is going to be determine a lot of things we we are seeing china in the china india you could uh, the 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 tensions in the china india ecosystem coming up a lot we are seeing the media in different countries being manipulated in a way like no other time so media manipulation is going on information age we are seeing in a world where content is becoming is content production is happening at a rate which is unbelievable with ott uh, media changing quite a bit middlemen everywhere are being removed everywhere the middlemen in an information age the middlemen have very little ability to succeed so i think whatever you learn in business schools are very important but think about it you are learning newtonian physics but you are entering a world of einsteinian and einsteinian physics and quantum physics which is even beyond einsteinian physics so everything you learn in business school please understand that that those are base concepts on which you have to build on you cannot leave it as what it is and and then when you look at change with that lens you look at change across space and change across time change across time is volatility right change across space is i would for lack of a better word i would call it ambiguity you could go here or you could go there that's ambiguity you could put your inventory here or you could put your inventory there that's ambiguity 
the problem space you know becomes more and more ambiguous you know as you know the options with space increase we also in a world of change across time and change across space volatility and ambiguity what we see is more events being stuffed into a certain duration so more interactions in that duration event is nothing but an interaction of various things right so more events means more interactions and more interactions mean you are experiencing complexity and increase in complexity is is quite fast more lots and lots and lots of interactions this perspective of comp- increase in complexity has resulted more volatility more ambiguity more complexity has resulted in us feeling uncertainty and feeling anxiety um and therefore you know the perspective of appreciating what's going on with the pandemic the politics the economics and feeling you know that we are screwed is nothing but feeling uncertainty and not knowing what to do with it are you a friend of uncertainty do you look at uncertainty as your friend or do you look at uncertainty as something that you should be guarded most of us are have not come to the mindset where we look at uncertainty as a friend why well we are more and more we we do everything possible to prepare ourselves from there stealing ourselves as if it's come to going to come and hit us uh we go and get education in place we get the best education we get the best uh you know uh, wealth we save all of those things in some ways we are kind of stealing ourselves against uncertainty well i think that's i think that perspective of stealing ourselves against uncertainty comes in the way of us embracing uncertainty as if it's a friend i believe the future should be one where you embrace uncertainty thinking it's a friend and it will treat you like a friend because if you treat it like a friend it will treat you like a friend so that perspective meant that means that the way you see the future has to be with a lot more hope and a lot less fear what how do i differentiate between hope and fear actually hope and fear are just manifestation of thoughts and hope is all the positive things that will happen in the future fear is all the negative things that will happen in the future in other words negative or fear equal to hope so if you want to see your thoughts has more as hope and less as fear the mathematical you know operator you have to invest into is modulus how can you put what is equivalent of a mathematical operator of modulus on all your thoughts what is that modulus and that's what i am interested in knowing i am kind of seeking that modulus and i look at that modulus as a perspective of viewing the world where you are treating uncertainty as your friend treating sigma as your friend sigma is variance and if you don't treat sigma as your enemy uh, by trying to reduce sigma uh, but treat it as your friends uh, if you look at everything in problem solving that we do we try to reduce sigma six sigma is about reducing sigma total quality management and manage, total quality management is about reducing sigma assembly line in a factory is about reducing sigma uh quality control is about reducing sigma uh you know everything in the world is about reducing sigma uh that till today but i think the future is going to be us embracing sigma and feeling good about sigma and therefore from a world of uh see shunning sigma we are going to go to a world of seeking sigma and i'm going to put an ad for my company in this uh, in this uh, quickly it's not about mu shunning sigma it's about mu seeking sigma mu meaning your expectations or mean shunning sigma which is variance towards a world which is mu seeking sigma so with that perspective you know i want us to see the world with a modulated perspective of our thoughts which always means that you're going to get abundance out you're going to get hope out and that's going to mean a lot um it's easy for me to say this right i'm sitting you know i'm i'm running a company uh, i'm not look, going to look for a job in the next 6 months 
but all of you guys are going to look for a job now and you're getting entering the market right now i think i have a little bit of experience about this feeling guys i graduated at one of the worst one of the not as bad as this but it's still not was not a great time it was post uh, you know post uh, it was during a you know du- uh, post the dot com crisis and uh, the consulting firms had stopped hiring from from university of chicago and only 30% of us in university of chicago at that point of time was the number one school in the united states only 30% of us had jobs so two thirds of us uh, did not have a job um i was lucky I, i got a job but but very quickly i realized that you know i wanted to build something on my own but uh, uh, you know i apart from that we went through the 2008 financial crisis uh which was which was more serious i would say than the dot com crisis and uh, uh, and that one was in the cent- in the center of us building mu sigma we were in the initial stages of mu sigma and we went through the crisis and and frankly it made us better it made us stronger and now this crisis is even bigger um than the 2008 crisis so the nature of crisis is that it typically builds on each other so it will tend to get bigger and bigger and bigger it's kind of like a bollywood hits you know the latest movies are going to become bigger hits if it becomes a hit well that's because the nature of information is like that so with that perspective i want to you know engage with you in a with a perspective that please view your world with the with a sense of abundance with a sense of with a modulated sense of your thought which allows you to see it as hope and uh, and what does it mean to do that well you know a, a a a value system built on abundance will be a value system which will be built not on what you know but on what you can learn and guess what there is a perspective between learning and knowing and it's just again based on time uh if knowledge is k dk by dt is learning and we still don't have a word for rate of change of learning but i think it's going to become important the rate of learning is going to be the differentiator of future and we still don't even have an english word for that if one of you can come up with an english word for that i'd love to learn about that but i as of as of now i don't know that there is a rate of change of learning perspective at best there is a phenomenon called growth mindset which which kind of tries to measure that um but that become, that's going to become very very important guys learning over knowing and then if you think of learning over knowing as your as your grounded ground first floor your second floor then becomes experimentation over experts today you feel good about going to a iim which is an amazing institution but take it lightly please because it's whatever you know is um, is is going to is going to is is going to be it's only going to be possible to uh you know do more with it if you can try out different different things in a world which is filled with change so experimentation is going to become more important than experts and the third perspective is this world of experimentation is only possible if you can view the world from a lens of interactions and not from a lens of secrets secrets are a world which thinks that i know a little bit and i'm going to keep it to myself well if you know whatever you know share and as you share the if you encourage other people to share and that changes that interaction space changes 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 and that makes us all see new things faster so interaction property is going to be far more important than intellectual property so the new ip is interaction property so this um grounding principles uh, is something that we stick to at music man we solve problems with with that perspective